I'm seeing ST changes on the ECG, and uh, so it looks like he's getting a little ischemic, and I cannot maintain his blood pressure. It's down in the 40s. Okay, well, we better get uh, get on bypass. Give the heparin, please. 21,000 units of heparin is in the patient. Thank you. That's 21,000 units of heparin in the patient. Okay, let's get a knife, an arterial cannula. Okay, hold on to that, Jeff. I'm going to divide your lines. What's your ACT? Okay, uh, ACT is uh, coming up on the 300 and rising. Thank you. You made the ACT with a few Yeah, good. Okay, just an update, our pressure still in the 40s with ST changes. Okay. We have a stitch for the venous. Okay to test the heartland? Yeah, please test it, yeah. Line's okay. Okay, thanks. Knife and a venous canal, please. All right. <clears throat> You've got your venous line now. Okay, thanks. We're going on bypass. Okay, ventilation's off. How are your ST segments? Still, still up. Still up. All right, let's get him rested. What's that? What's that? Pressure? What's that alarm? Uh, circuit alarm. Well, I'm checking it out. I think we're okay. Let me just re-zero the transducer. Uh, what's going on? Uh, the guy's ischemic. He's I know, pretty ischemic, I know. and he's hypotensive. Right greater than the left. Yeah. So. Um, What's going on? Uh, my pressure's high. I re-zeroed the transducer. Your pressure can't be high. Pressure. The pressure's 40. Well, I can't flow higher than 1.5 liters a minute right now. Um, Let me get you some help. It's my arterial line pressure. Are there any kinks in the I field? I don't see any kinks on the field. Okay, me. I don't see any down here either. So the aorta looks, uh, the aorta looks blue. The aorta is blue and hard. Doug, do we have a dissection? Can you look at the echo? Yes, there's definitely a flap in the ascending aorta. We de there's definitely a dissection. Okay, can we let's go on the lungs, some leave some uh, volume in on the venous side, come okay. back off bypass. Off bypass. And change our arterial cannulation to the groin. Okay. Yeah, we're the okay, we're ventilating. Yeah. Blood pressure is still low. I need, low. I need I a need knife and a femoral arterial cannula. Okay. Please. Knife. I'm filling up to the venous line. Looks like the blood pressure is coming up, Bill. Okay, thanks. Let me let me know if you see a, a uh, wire in the true lumen of the aorta. Need a 60 on the patient. Okay, I do see a wire. Okay. It's in the. It looks appropriately placed. All right. All right. All right, Jen, get that arterial line divided. Okay. Human clamp? Yeah. Heavy scissors. Can you get it? Yeah. Great, okay. Okay, go back on in the groin. Go back on in the groin. Cool to 18 degrees. Cool to 18 degrees. Ventilation's off. So as we join this scenario, it's clear the patient is noting well and there's a hurry to get on bypass. The perfusionist hasn't tested the arterial line properly uh, and agrees that we're ready to go on bypass. And, and this creates a whole set of conditions of confused communication. And so, and this communication is all about the pressure. And so when there is a, a, a problem and the surgeon asks what is wrong, he is seeing a, a drop in the uh, 
patient's blood pressure, but the perfusionist is fixated on the line pressure. And this um, mismatch of mental models about what pressure we are discussing uh, delays identification of the real problem. Now the perfusionist can fall into a couple of, of key uh, error traps here by fixating on the line pressure and not trying to understand what's the bigger picture of the problem, uh, you can go down a path of trying to fix the line pressure when actually that's not the, the source of the problem. So the other potential is for confirmation bias. And at one point the perfusionist assumes that his transdu transducer needs to be zeroed and that's the source of the problem. And he is looking for information that confirms his mental picture about what the problem is rather than seeking out information that might actually help build a, a, a picture and get to a resolution quicker. These communication problems result in a delayed diagnosis of the actual problem for the patient. And th this is actually a really good example of a low frequency, high acuity event. It's perfect for medical simulation training because it gives people experience of, of this low frequency event for the first time in simulation before it happens in a real OR. It's useful to also point out that the surgeon uh, really showed some good behaviours in terms of dealing with the problem, delegating tasks, initiating the, the next set of actions to try and resolve the problem once it was identified.